Hello, my name is Aloy Sherlock, and I got a great video for you today. This one's all about string orchestration, or more specifically, about pizzicatos, which I call pizzicato madness. It was a lot of fun putting together this minute and a half video, minute and a half demo. The video goes much, much longer. And we're gonna tear it apart, put it back together, and we're gonna learn an awfully lot here. Also, on a separate note, I wanna tell you it's been a real joy putting together these videos. And thank you for all your different comments and thank you for subscribing. So, here we go. Ah. String players, I know your fingers are tired. Pizzicatos, no bows. Here we go. everyone. Very nice. That, that conductor makes that orchestra sound great. I was doing a lot of, I was doing a lot of live theater. And when you're doing a lot of live theater, you're playing, you got singers up there, you got different musicians behind you, you're doing arrangements. And I was very good at that skill set. But once you know, I started going inside of a DAW and started doing mock-ups, orchestrated mock-ups, mock-ups, I started realizing that that required a whole different set of skill sets. So I had to, I had to learn, I had to learn my tools, I had to learn my libraries. So then that way that my mock-ups started getting better and better. And that's, that's what this whole series of videos are about. They're about making your, making you sound better. Now, if you mix that in with a little bit of talent and having a great skill set, then you get the wow. Peel away the score set. When I first started working on this, I realized I've been getting into a habit of doing the same things over and over. In other words, when I was working on this particular piece, it started off with uh, this riff here. And as I was listening to it, I was going, okay, I like, I like it musically, but is it anything differently than I've ever done before? And I said, no, no, it really isn't. So then I said, what would this sound like if it was in pizzicatos? Because I've never ever actually written something that was all pizzicatos, only pizzicatos. So then what I did is I said, if it's gonna do pizzicatos, then I can't do orchestra. I have to do, I have to do uh, chamber, I have to do chamber because I need that closeness, the closeness of the picking of the strings. So then I went to my chamber strings and, oh, let me go ahead and turn these off so that way I don't have the delay while I'm playing. 
and I started going into my chamber strings. Where are you here, my Divisi mate? There we go. And once I started playing with these, I started going ahead and I did something very unusual. I have two, two different players or two different, uh, two different libraries playing for first chamber strings. One is the Synchron uh, Elite, and then the second one, the second one is I'm using the Dimension Strings. But what I started doing is I took the semitone here, and instead of having it just playing normal, I now had my semitone playing up three, three notes. So when I'm hitting a C, I'm actually hitting a C plus an E flat because because the elite strings, let's go over to here to mix, their, their tuning is regular. So when you're playing, you're hearing two separate, you're hearing two separate notes. And then if you're playing, if you're playing with two fingers, you're hearing four separate notes. So if I'm in playing in fifths, in other words, a C and a G, my C is playing a C and an E flat. My G is also playing a G and a B flat. So that's a, uh, uh, that's a C flat minor seventh, C flat minor seventh. So every single time I'm playing, now all of a sudden, it's... get a whole get a whole different set of sounds that I'm starting to work with and I'm not doing the same thing that I've done before now all of a sudden I'm getting orchestration that's being done what I've been watching well I've been watching a lot of uh, Vivaldi uh, scores I'm I'll go on to I'll go on to YouTube and you can see them there and I noticed that he a lot of times will have four separate violins and they're playing different things and this is doing that same type of thing so you learn things from you learn things from looking at other people's scores. The instruments used for for this pizzicato madness is violins one, violins two, both plucking, and then we have we have the bass. And let's pull that up here. There you go. And let's go into the score. And we see this in here and as it's moving along it just gives it just gives eighth notes just in octaves so then the cello what he's doing while three blind mice is being played on top He's then he's then going boop 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 boop. He's just going in a C minor scale, going up, going down, while dum bum 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 bum. It gives movement, so that way when the listener's listening to it, it gives him excitement because he's going oh wow I'm getting all these sounds, and then underneath all of that then. We have a harp that's just giving plucking, going ahead, and giving a little couple of little, that little accents. A celeste that's just going little accents here and there. Then we wanted to have some percussion. But because you're only using pizzicatos, now you've got to be careful about the percussion because you can't use anything big. You use a timpani and all of a sudden, poof, it overpowers. And if it doesn't overpowering, then you're putting it way back and... Music simply doesn't sound like that. So you've got to get use instruments that can work with the pizzicato. And so what I did is I used a tambourine. And the tambourine, going here, tambourine is oh, let's go to percussion tambourine. There you are. So it works off velocity. So 
so then that way you get the different layers as the tambourine is getting hit. Then next, we have, instead of a snare drum being played, now we're getting the rims of the snare drums. And I really like the rims because you get so much, you get so much out of that. Nice stuff, really nice stuff. And then on the bottom of that is a uh, is cymbals, just giving little accents. And so that's everything. You've got your cymbals, you got your tambourines, you got your snare, you got your snares, uh, rims, a little bit of celeste harps, and your cellos, your violins one and two. And that's what makes up all of the different players for this piece. Now. Once we're going ahead and we're moving, and those accents, da 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 pa pa da pa 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 pa, just gives so much life to it. Okay, now this part here is very interesting. When I started to play it, I was going, there's not a whole lot of life in it because when, if I'm playing this as a live player, when I start getting to that part, I'm gonna get emotionally invested into that and I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So then what I did is I went ahead and opened up my tempo. And here, underneath the tempo, you're gonna notice that once I start going to, uh, when I go to, uh, 34, 36, 38 bar, 43 bar, that the tempos are constantly changing. Getting faster. As it's doing the octaves. So just like real players, Real players would speed up because they're, they're not robots. And inside of your DAW, your DAW, it, it's a computer. So all it does is go click, 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 click perfectly. Humans don't do that. That's a great tip to add to your music. Change some of the tempos here and there, and you'll feel it go up, you'll feel it go down. Good stuff. Now, when I was going through this, and I first wrote the... I like that. But before, always start thinking to yourself, how can you do things just a little bit differently? So instead of going... Instead, I started doing octaves. Add things to your music. Just say, how can I do this just a little bit differently? Most of this piece, or I should say this piece is in C minor because everything we're doing. Everything. Everything's in C minor. So at the end, to put a little addendum into it and to change up because I want the listener to have the, the listener to have a, a great experience. So I said, let's move up. Let's go up a half chromatically, just one step. So at the end, instead of being in C minor, I move it up to D into D flat. So I move it up into D flat. It just adds a little bit to that. Now here's here's a good tip. When I started putting this the end where it goes where it goes off. Like a circus. It's like a circus. Galloping. Circus galloping. Well, when I was trying it, 
I was playing, I was wanting to do it in fifths. Wow. But I was having a hard time. I was having a hard time uh, putting all that together. So what I did is I went ahead and played just the one part by itself. And then I went ahead and opened up here. Let's open that up. Come on. There we go. Uh, we're looking at the data here. Come on. I want to get to this spot here. Now, there was no way that I was going to be able to play that. I mean, I guess if I would have just sat there for hours and hours, I could have put it together. But to make it so that way I wouldn't be spending all that time, I simply played in the first, the first top notes by themselves. And then I went ahead and then copied those notes and pasted them. But I lowered them down so that way they were, a, they were, they were five notes or a fifth below what I was originally playing. And that's a good thing for you to do, that if you're doing something and if, you, uh, if you're having trouble and if you want to go ahead and add some harmony to your structures, and the more harmony you add to it, the more complexity that the hearer gets, the better in most cases it will sound. By doing that, by copying and pasting, it made it so that way I was playing perfectly in with each other because if you're doing that chromatic thing and if you're off, it, it sounds awful. It sounds awful. So I did there. I cheated. I copied and I pasted. And then at the end, it's almost like it's laughing. And there we go. The little harp at the end. And so that's the whole piece there. Thank you, thank you once again for for uh, taking your time and spending it here with me. It's been, like I said at the very beginning, it's been a real joy having you. And I love doing this stuff. God bless, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.